So I won't be specific about us, but what I would say, here's a general sort of rules for how to do due diligence on firms. I mean, I think sort of the way we founded Funded Trading Plus is going to be the thing that guides us all the way through the future. It was a case of... Hello traders and welcome back to We Are Funded Trading Plus, the podcast. Today we're joined with Simon, the CEO of Funded Trading Plus. And today, Simon, I'd like to talk to you about long-term goals. Today's question comes from Mohammed from Pakistan and he says, what is Funded Trading Plus's overarching long-term goals and how can traders be reassured that Funded Trading Plus is here to stay? Quite a deep question. What's your fir first thoughts on this? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, less stress and exposure to industry <laughs> chaos would be would be wonderful for me. I mean, I think sort of the way we founded Funded Trading Plus is going to be the thing that guides us all the way through the future. It was a case of, are we going to be accessible? Are we going to be transparent? Are we going to be trustworthy? Are we going to pay people out? Are we, are we going to be clear and have simple programs? You know, I'm, I can't guarantee we won't change things in the future, but, you know, sort of core things that, that were industry first, like paying people out on day one, not having time limits, allowing people to trade over news, and all these things where we're seeing restrictions or have seen restrictions are things we want to we want to sort of you know avoid doing and just having a realistic sustainable model as i said before we're never going to be the cheapest we're never going to have the most generous parameters but we're going to set ourselves up that traders know that when they purchase an evaluation account if they pass if they stick to the rules they're going to get paid out which is what people want i mean i can never imagine a future where people aren't going to want to be able to have sort of reliability of the payouts or fast payouts so that's something we're always going to keep in going into the future as well so take me back to when you first launched from the Trading Plus. What was the what was the main goal? I imagine what was the first big goal that you guys had set for yourselves right back at the start in twenty twenty one for Fund Trading Plus. Well, it was a case of I approached it from a trader's point of view because I was running my trade room and people, as the funded space was getting more and more exposure and more people were being interested in it, the questions I was being asked: How can we pass this funded test? So in the trade room, I was taking all these different challenges of FX firms and futures firms, and I was like, well, I think we can do things better. Again, to talk about the time limits again, there's no good reason to put time limits on people. It's like some people want to be trading every day, some people want to be trading once a week people so forget though don't they that there was time limits in the industry oh, for, it's crazy. For, for so long yeah. and now it's just become the norm but but yeah. we, we did set the standard so that must have been yeah. good to achieve that to see other firms well not copying but yeah imitating what, what what the standards that you set that must have been a good feeling on your long-term goal of making a, a better environment for traders seeing that actually go into fruition kind of thing was that was that good to see or well, that was the standard because it was a case of it used to be sort of almost 28 day payouts and then occasionally you get someone to do a 14 day payout i was like we'll just pay people out on day one and let them have that flexibility it's not it doesn't seem any good reason not to do that other than trying to reduce payouts which is not what we wanted to do do traders take the current like generosity of firms for granted now with how good some options are or is there too is it too good to be true for some in some cases uh, it, it can be, yeah. I think I think traders are becoming a lot more astute and wise now. It's because if it sounds too good to be true, it is. They expect that you know you need to have a balanced parameter. So that's one positive thing that's come out of some of the recent volatility, <laughs> shall we say, say the industry. So in, in terms of coming back to the question, you know how how are we going to ensure that we're we're going to be you know around for the long term? We've we've never been obsessed about being the biggest firm and sort of you know being spoken about the most or been on Twitter as a CEO Twitter account or anything like that. It's a case of just doing the basic things that we've always done well when we were small, when we were medium, when we were larger like we are now and just trying to make sure that we focus on giving the best service to people, being accessible. You know, if, they, if people, someone sends an email, it gets answered. If someone goes on live chat as a human to speak to them, just basic stuff like that. That we're always, the, the, the stuff that's kept us in the game since 2021, even during all the volatility, is exactly the same stuff that's going to keep us going for as long as this industry lasts. So three and a half years on, how have your how has your long term goals changed? Obviously, you've you basically ticked off every long term goal that you set at the start. You're you're still ticking off. How does your future three years from this moment on look like in terms of goals and the vision for the company? Well, I'm a lot more positive about this industry than I what than I have been possibly over 2022 and 2023. I never sort of really thought how long will it last. You know, we'll do as as well as we can in in that period of time. But I think now we've got these platform providers who, who want to be in the space for the long term. There's diversity of platforms. You know, there's three on offer. Could even be more in the future. And I think everyone knows where they are with the industry. Regulators have looked at firms. Firms have reached out to regulators. 
regulators so you know what can and can't be done. So I see a, a long-term path uh, that's, that, that sort of extends beyond a couple of years to maybe 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Who, who knows where the space is going to evolve. But I won't be specific about us, but what I would say, here's a general sort of rules for how to do due diligence on firms. Get into the, you know, have a look on the website. Are they registered somewhere as they should be? There's companies company that need to register somewhere. Is the ownership transparent? Are the owners on the website? And once you've gone on that superficial level, uh, sort of looked at that, then get stuck into the discords, look into the trust pilot, look on forums, Google, like negative terms like XX scam, XX not paid me out, and really get stuck into it and just sort of do due diligence in that way because you know, a double-edged sword of the internet can be a pain in the ass, but at the same time it makes people accountable. Social media makes people accountable and companies accountable. So I'd say is just really get stuck into your due diligence and almost maybe do a spreadsheet. I've seen people do this online and it's just ticking boxes and you come to a score at an end for trusting the firms. For us, personally, I invite people to come in our discord and and just ask questions have a look at our payouts channel we don't tend to shut unless it's ridiculous discussion we don't tend to shut it down or someone's trolling or spamming or whatever just go and ask traders every firm should be happy to allow you to go into the discord which tends to be the main method of communication and marketing to to talk to other traders and, and ask questions like say look at trust pilot look at the one star five star reviews the percentages other common themes and things like that and that's how just how you can do and we're, we're happy to stand by all of our things based on that criteria and, and stack up against anyone so 10 years of Trade Room Plus, three years of Funder Trading Plus. What is the biggest red flag you've seen? Not just Funder Trading related, but maybe just trading related industry in general. What's the biggest red flag that you could see or give advice to to a new trader to stay away from a, a firm without naming any any? Of yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just it's just a golden principle for life. It sounds good, good to be true. It is too good to be true. I want to encourage this. I even <laughs> occasionally will give people my number to have WhatsApp conversations with at weekends and stuff like that. And I think I think that I don't think there's any coincidence that we're probably that we are the most trusted sort of firm in the industry. And we go sort of that extra mile. We do have humans on live chat. We will answer emails. If there are disgruntled people and, and who aren't happy, we can escalate the complaints all the way potentially up to me and things like that. And I will just have a conversation with people. I'll DM people, I'll email people, and, and the senior team will put that effort in if needed. Because we've always got to remember, again, it sounds like a business cliche, but the customers are the most important people. So if you're not taking care of the people who are allowing us to operate in this fun, crazy, wonderful industry and allow us to have the jobs that we do, then 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 you're in a road for a disaster. So no matter how big we get or whether we go up, down in size, we're always going to remember the, the, the sort of traders, if you like. Now, I found that really interesting. And one of the things you mentioned, we've covered trust. But now my next question is, what is the longer term vision for, for trader payouts within Fund the Trading Plus? So how do you see the evolution from, from 2021 to, to where you want to see the future? That's a good question. I think, I think it applies to the industry wide as well payouts so, you know, we've gone from probably these really big people who've got payouts who we celebrate who've been celebrated across the industry who've, who've done these incredible trades or but now now the risk profiles are sort of wanted to be reined in a little bit more for sort of longer term more sustained now we've got a huge data set of trades over these years so we know, you know who are the people who are, who are the contractors who are going to be making sort of 5 10 15 20 30 payouts and who are the ones who are potentially just going to boom and bust and have one now it's easy to look at the people who have these huge payouts but how many people fail trying to get those huge payouts as well so generally when we're seeing sort of trader contractor satisfaction levels being higher it's people who it's less volatile okay they're not getting these sort of headline huge six-figure payouts but what they are doing is taking little and often and that key and the keyword is sort of consistency with that as well. five years from now I, I would much prefer us to have a really strong quality group of regular traders who give us the so I mean we, we like we want the data for research and development purposes if we have loads of excellent traders taking excellent trades we can take those trades we've got a whole development team it team who do this and we can deploy those strategies in the real market to generate capital alpha which is you know which is why we try to encourage these longer term sustainable behaviors rather than these boom and bust behaviors so you know that that's what i think we're going to be well we are encouraging that and i think that's what the whole industry is going to be encouraging the ones who want to monetize the trader data uh, are going to need contractors who are trading in sensible ways who are managing the risk who are consistent who are showing skills in different market conditions over a long time over a large sample of data and who can manage the risk and they're getting rewarded by that by having regular smaller payouts which is less sexy but overall they'll probably generate more sort of payouts doing that yeah i always go back to the to the message of would you trade your personal account 
if you had 50, for example, a $50,000 account, would you trade that, your own money, the same way as you do a prop firm account? And I think that's it. Mm. And if the answer is no, I wouldn't, well, maybe your risk profile or your risk appetite is a little bit slightly off. And would you agree with that or? Yeah, I would. I mean, we do, you know, compared to a personal account, we do allow a, a larger risk appetite because people don't want to do an evaluation for six months, do they? So no. they want to be, you know, they want to do their evaluation maybe a little bit more quickly and then on the funded account settle down, which, which we tolerate to a degree. I mean, we even, you know, if someone's really high risk on their evaluation account, generally we'll just say to them, look, we know you've wanted to pass quickly, but just tone it down for the funded accounts. So we're not going to just deny people for no reason. So the longer term perspective also negates the, the downside of relative drawdown. Because I say to people, look, are you looking to trade over a couple of days or a week? Or are you looking to you know, trade over months and potentially years? I mean, what does the first 6%, 10% matter when you wanted to be making hundreds of percents over the long term? And of course, then that d relative drawdown allows us to then give all those additional benefits. No time limits, day one payouts and things like that as well so that also negates the drawbacks of the relative drawdown is when people take that longer term perspective no i think that's really cool i think that answers mohammed's question super well we've covered trust payouts the future we've also touched upon trading drawdown a little bit and how in fact that actually does benefit the traders for the long-term vision um anything else you'd like to add not really. I mean, we should do a podcast in like five years' time and say, told you so. <laughs> yeah. No, that sounds that sounds really, really good. But um, no, thanks again. Thanks, everybody, for listening, tuning in. Uh, let us know your feedback in the comments below, and we'll catch you next week. Thanks a lot, sir.